All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rum Lab channel at Savvy. I'm super excited to be here with you guys again. We're now in March. And you know what that means? Miami Rum Congress. Yay! Anyways, um, I'm actually here in Miami. I'm at, um, already getting ready, but this is not about uh let's get well let's talk about rum education and uh really quickly welcome to savvy as mentioned to your right if you're visiting us right now on zavi.co and you're participating uh you will see that there's a chat box to your right and i see a lot of people already some people doing some comments dave russell christina johannes which is great let us know where you're watching us from uh oh dennis jones as well from northern nevada which is awesome if you have any questions during the event make sure to write them down where it says ask questions uh if you're seeing us right now on linkedin or facebook or youtube or twitter come over to savvy.co we have our website right down here uh and you can participate from our from the live streams um well that being said today's main topic is what's typically inside a bottle of martinique rum Actually, if you guys maybe notice, rum in French is written with R H U M, and I wrote them with the American way. Hmm. Big, big mistake, Fede. Anyways, but it's okay. I think you guys will uh, uh, let this one fly. But the most important thing is that we have from La, Conf La Conferencia, our conference, the room. We have our guest, uh, who's one of the co founders, Jerry Gitani, right here. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Federico. How are you? I'm doing super well. I'm very excited that you're here with us. Uh, uh, I'm happy to be with you. I will try to to, to make the best of, of people listening to us. Well, if, I think, Jerry, before we start on today's topic, uh, when we start talking about uh, what's typically inside of a bottle of Martinique rum, mm -hmm. uh, let's, we want to learn more about you, who you are, uh, You've been many years in the industry, um, and then so it will be great to have a little bit of a background. Yeah, so uh, I am uh, Joey Gitani. I was born in Martinique, uh, the French uh, Caribbean island, and uh, I left uh, Martinique uh, when I was uh, 18 years old for st studying in in France, and uh, I started my career in the in the bank. I was uh, in the bank for many years, and uh, 15 years ago I left. I left the bank because I, I met a guy who was started the first uh, rum shop in France. It was the first uh, liquor store uh, with only rums in the shop, and I decided to to join him <laughs> because what I didn't say is that I was I was born in uh, on the plantation on Saint James plantation because my grandfather was a director of this uh, distillery. Wow, so I, I didn't know that. I think when when I was uh, a baby, they put some rum in my, you know. <laughs> 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 so, so, so 15 years ago, I started to, to, to work uh, with uh, Christian de Montaguer shop in Paris, uh, which is uh, the biggest uh, rum store. We have about uh, 1,500 references in rum from all, all over the world. And uh, also, and two years after, two years after uh, I started with uh, Christian de Montaga, I met a guy called uh, Benoit Bay uh, on the net, yeah. and we became friends. And we started with La Confrérie du Rhum. As a matter of fact, uh, Benoit started with the Ministère du Rhum because because we we, <laughs> we had the Minister of Rome. and yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it wasn't. Ed wasn't happy. He said, "Benoit, you cannot uh, call your group the Ministère du Rhum." <laughs> so we changed the name for La, Conf La Conférie du Rhum and the, the, the group exploded and now we are 45,000 members. Uh, it's, 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 so, I think it's the biggest group on social media right now. Uh, 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 rum group, yes, I think too. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Rum group. Uh, rum group. And uh, with Benoit, we started uh, a few years after we had an idea that uh, we were visiting Martinique with uh, Ian Burrell. And Ian wasn't uh, aware of agricole rum, in fact. And we visited a small distillery, and Ian discovered that. And he, Ian said, uh, said to us, 
why guys you don't make an agricultural room at our London Rome Festival? And that was the, the start of the agricultural room tour. You know, we started uh, the first one at London, and then we, we do it in Rome, in, uh, in New York, in San Francisco, in uh, Germany, Berlin, etc. And how, how, how many years has that uh, basically pop-up has been happening at the UK Rome Fest? At the UK Rome Fest, it was in uh, 2015. 2015. Because I know yeah. I went and I participated out of one. Uh, and it was phenomenal. It was uh, it was it was great. And then later, you guys took the agricultural rum tour, of, and you brought it to the Americas, which was phenomenal too. Yeah. Yes, we, we we started uh, in uh, in San Francisco and then to New York uh, uh, with you, <laughs> and uh, and so on to to Germany, Poland, uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, Denmark, see, it was a very nice, uh, very nice idea, and uh, uh, we were promoting agricultural rum from uh, Martinique, but also from Guadeloupe and from uh, French Guiana. Exactly. Mm. And um, so I have some pictures here to be shared, and then this is. Yeah, that seeing... was in uh, that was in Berlin last uh, last August. It was uh, presenting. And this is with the agriculture. Yes, that was with the agriculture, so promoting agricultural rum from Guadeloupe and Martinique. As you can see, if you can distinguish those, the different bottles, and um, making also some uh, master classes during that that uh, that, that rum fest. And then here we have, we see Jerry giving a class. Yes, I'm I'm giving a lecture on rum in the master of. Uh, wine and spirit management at a business school called the cage business school and uh, there is a uh, international uh, lectures with uh, people coming from uh, china south africa brazil etc and it's very in interesting uh, uh, giving some information about roms uh, to these young people that uh, are going to work in the business uh, of uh, spirits and uh, wine spirits it's very, very nice very nice Excellent. moment. The lecture is at that. Uh, it's a three hours lecture, and it's very interesting. And then they have an exam after, they have, and there is a testing session also. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the warm, in the warm shop uh, with the producer of uh, La Favorite Rome, Frank Dormois and Marilyn Dormois. Frank is a distiller, is a guy who distills the, the rum, and uh, he's also the master blender. And uh, Marilyn is uh, on the commercial part. And they were visit visiting us uh, in Paris uh, uh, two months ago. France, and let's talk about a little bit about France right now, because France is one of the biggest consumer of rum, right? Uh, for many, for, for many brands, is their number one market. It's it's a big big market, and uh, for every each type of rum, you know, uh, rum from uh, what we call the, the Spanish uh, style rum. Uh, uh, with a diplomatico, for example, uh, and for English type rum with a uh, rum like uh, Four Square or like uh, the Jamaican rum uh, Appleton, of course, and for and, and, and of course with the French uh, the French uh, rum from the French West Indies. But it's a big it's a big market, exploding since ten years ago. It was a it's a growing market, and now uh, you know that whiskey was the first uh, spirit. Uh, in uh, in France, but now rum is at the same level uh, wow. than whiskey, and many people are are are, ask, uh, are buying. Uh, I, I was uh, impressed by the you know the, the value of the basket of each uh, consumer. They, they you know, always now, say that people, now people buy bottles at uh, fifty euros. You know, uh, as the, as like a normal. You know, <laughs> Normal, yeah. That's <laughs> a big exploding market, and um, you know that uh, be, there is a uh, since uh, about uh, 10, 10 years or perhaps a bit more, uh, Rome Fest in Paris. This is a very big, big event. Uh, it's uh, on uh, April. The next one is uh, two, three, and fourth of April. 
And uh, it's a big event. Uh, you have about uh, six to seven hundred visitors, uh, thousand, six thousand visitors, about, about six thousand visitors. It's a very big, big event, and many, many uh, uh, brands uh, from all over the world they came, they come to Paris to, to present their product. Yeah. That is that. That mm -hmm. has to be the biggest rum festival in the world right now. Uh, it's it's uh, it's. it's uh, I think it's the biggest one. Yes. yes. Yeah. Of with, course. Uh, with, perhaps with the Berlin, uh, the German rum festival also is a, is a big one. Those are those are massive but, numbers. Yeah, we can we can say that in Europe the rum is is, is growing in Europe uh, all over the Europe, especially uh, France, which is the biggest market. But you have also uh, Belgium and uh, uh, Italy. Uh, Germany, of course, and now uh, Denmark, uh, Poland, even Poland. You have a, uh, now a warm fest uh, in Poland. You know, it's very interesting. Yes. All right. And then the last picture, because we we should start talking about Martinique rum. Well, we have a cell here, uh, Jerry, on his social life around the world. <laughs> that was at you know, a different uh, event. Uh, with uh, Luca Gargano and Gianni Capovilla, you know, from Vellier, and with Ian, uh, the World Rome Ambassador, of course, <laughs> Carmen <laughs> from uh, Havana in, in France. Uh, so we 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 meet ma many people. You know, the, the, the Rome family, as we said, is uh, very nice people. And uh, But missing, because of, you know, of the COVID, we didn't travel too, too much <laughs> last two years. So. Uh, but that was in Paris at the Whiskey Live with uh, Luca and uh, with Ian. It was uh, an event uh, called the uh, Bartenders Society. It's uh, like an award for uh, for bartenders organized by uh, Saint James. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk. Let's change this. Let's talk about. Let's start talking about Martinique Rum. Mm -hmm. All right. And then so for today we actually just released on the. On the Rum Lab, a new, which is basically part two of a, a series of uh, infographics. So we mm -hmm. did part one that we introduced with Benoit, and now mm -hmm. we are doing uh, the second part that we're uh, introducing today with uh, Jerry. Mm -hmm. And then today's like, what's typically inside a bottle of Martinique rum? And we're going <laughs> to focus uh, in a couple things, right? Uh, because in the previous seminar, Benoit already talked to us a little bit about the rules um, and some of the about the history. But today we're going to learn about uh, more about aging rules, different things mm -hmm. uh, about the facilities, things that the companies have to follow to be considered a, a Martinique. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to really quickly show you uh, the entire infographic, but you can download it in high resolution in the rumlab.com. All right. Um, so the first question has to do uh, with aging. Uh, Jerry, uh, tell yeah. us a little bit about why, um, what's the importance of aging rum for Martinique, right? Um mm -hmm. And because you have different types of aging too, right? You have the aging that's done on barrels, but do you have the ones that are done in, uh, in the big, the big um, tanks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so can you explain us a little bit more about the, the, the um, about aging rum yes. in Martinique? Yes. So, uh, you know, before be, before the aging, you, you talk about that with Benoit, I think last time. Before the aging, you, as you know, the rum is a, what we call the white unaged rum. It has to rest in a stainless tank. So we don't call that aging. Okay. So the aging will start once we put uh, the rum in a wooden, in a wooden uh, vat or barrel. Uh, for the French leg legislation, French rule, even if it's not AOC, what we call age rum in French, vieux rum, has to be aged at uh, a minimum of three years in a, in a barrel. Okay. Under three years, it is what we called uh, uh, rum élevé sous bois or gold rum in, in English, and, or amber rum, which is less than three years age in a big vat, not, for, not uh, in, a, in a barrel. So uh, 
it is called, so there is a difference between what we call amber or gold worm and age worm. Age worm, it's from three years, which is, you can see the, 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 the VO, for example, which means very old. It means that the worm has been aged at least for three years. Then you have another appellation, which is VSOP, which is a minimum of four years age in oak barrel. It has to be in oak barrel, of course. And so, the XO, which is extra old, is a minimum aging of six, six years in barrel, okay, in oak barrel. Oak barrel. And then you can have uh, the real age when you know the date of uh, when they put it in the barrel and, and, when, and the date of the bottling. So you can say it's uh, 12 years or whatever you want. The exact age is from, you know, the date from the, uh, when you put the rum in the barrel and when you bottle it. Understood. Yeah. To, so wait, so, uh, so I'm very... VSOP, which means right, uh, very special, old and pale, right? Yeah, that's a exact term. Yes. But how do you uh, how is it pronounced? In what what would it be in French? We we it's an English word. <laughs> we don't have French <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> it's a VSOP. <laughs> there is no French sensation because it doesn't mean anything in French. <laughs> And then XO will be extra it's old. Right? That's, that's, it's, it's a term that guarantees you a minimum of four years age. Mm -hmm. And the same rule goes for goes for cognac. For cognac, you have the same rule, but it's not exactly the same uh, number of years, you know, because there, there was a change for the cognac. And I think now for cognac, XO, for example, it's a minimum of nine years, not six like for the Rome. Because as you know, uh, under the tropical climate, the rum uh, with uh, the process aging is two or three times uh, quicker than in, in, uh, in the, the, the Europe uh, climate. Oh so wait, so the AOC, uh, AOC recognizes that it recognizes that aging process is quicker on the Caribbean than on colder markets, and then so yeah. that's why it's lower. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. In, uh, in general, we, it's not exactly a mathematical, mathematical things, but generally we say that uh, a rum under the uh, tropical climate is going to age uh, two or three times uh, quicker than in Europe or temperate uh, climate. Yeah. Understood. And then in the vat, so you have uh, stainless steel vats, and then you have the option to do vats that are made out of wood, correct? Yes, uh, the stainless is for the white energy. Uh, so you have to make a difference here because for the AOC, it is forbidden to for the white energy drum to be in a wood bat. It has to be in a stainless because we they don't want that the, the, the impact of the wood on, on the rum. They want the rum to be really authentic, you know, uh, from the distillation. So that's why they, they, you are not allowed to put it in a vat. For the AOC, but you can do it, but you won't have the AOC appellation. You cannot put Martinique on your bottle. You can, you, you will put a French West Indies, but not Martinique. For example, Guadeloupe, which has not the AOC, they have only a uh, GI in, uh, geographical indication. They are allow allowed to do it. They can put it in a wood vat, okay? But with the AOC, you cannot do it. Understood. And. It why, but why would you want to leave a uh, white or clear rum in a stainless steel vat for a longer period of time? Is it going to so, get any flavor? You know, no, you, as you know, when the, the rum get out of, or, of what we call the distillate, when it get out of the colon or, or the pot steel, it's, a, it's between 65 and 75 ABV mm -hmm. percent. You see? But you have to reduce that to the commercial uh, ABV, uh, uh, which is Before generally it, for, for the crystal white rum between 50, 55. Now some do it to 62, but in general it's 40, 50, 55. So you have to reduce it with water, pure water. The longer you make this reduction, the more you will uh, develop the flavor of the rum. You know, you will, you will get off the... the, the the burning uh, taste of the rum. 
if you bottle the rum uh, after two weeks, you already have the burning part. You, you, you won't have all the flavors. That's why they reduce it and they do it in a, in a stainless tank. And, some, and during this time, they also uh, brew you know, the, 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 the rum to, to oxygenate it, to develop the aromas. Mm. So part of the process is oxygenation, like to get yeah. oxygen. Oxygenation it, and the reduction, uh, slowly reduction is better for the, you know, the rum molecule. For, you don't, if you do it too fast, you, you won't get off the burning, you know, of the, the bad taste uh, of, the, of the pure rum. Like for example, uh, um, we'll talk about cane blue. Uh, yes, that's, 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 that's the, the, the cane blue or red cane. Or now more and more, you have what we call mono varietal uh, uh, sugar cane uh, uh, parcels, and they, they, now there's a distillery, there's some uh, distilleries. They make uh, some uh, different. Uh, QV with a blue cane, like Clément was the first to do it in uh, 2000. And uh, now you have the, what we call the red cane, uh, the black cane for, for <laughs> Bologna. <laughs> but of course, uh, you, as you know, sugar cane has numbers, but it's easier to say black cane, red cane, because it's because of the color of the sugar cane, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, Easy to and, remember. And more and more, and more and more, uh, Distilleries, I think there is a part of marketing in it also, but of course, more and <laughs> more, and more uh, you, you will have this type of uh, monovarietal uh, uh, distillation. Yeah, so but going back to the question, if like so, this once this rum is uh is distilled in the and then is added in the bat in the vats, uh, they add water. They 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 have it goes through a process of aeration or or air sorry, yeah. Uh, but a, yeah. but you, they could be there for three months before it's bottled. Uh, so the minimum for the AOC it, it's uh, six weeks, but in general it's uh, it's uh, about three months. And you know some even now you have some uh, some vintage HEC was a pioneer in that they they, they, they were resting the room for two years. That's that's a nonsense because you cannot sell your rum during two years, you know. <laughs> yeah. But they did it, and now people are, are so uh, eager to to have this kind of uh, cuvee. So there, there is a vintage uh, every uh, every four years for for HEC or every two years, you know. Uh, but in general, it's more question of uh, three months uh, in general, yeah. three months, four months, six months. Understood. All right. Now, now going to uh, so we're gonna go up a little bit now, and now let's talk about the aging facilities. Um, mm -hmm. Something that's really interesting for me and that I see a lot in in Martinique with different presentations that we've done is that many of the distilleries uh, do two things. Uh, number one is that they might have they might have different columns. Or different uh, pustils, basically, uh, for different brands in the same. So they don't they don't try to. So one still is particularly for one brand, but they will have another one next to it, which will be for like they say the Marguerite. The one next right next to it is uh, Nason. Hypothetically, I'm not saying, uh, but back to back in one same facility, they're doing three or four companies. And, but they 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 reserve uh, that still for that company or for that brand. Yes, yes, yes. You have, for example, uh, if you go to uh, uh, Lamoni Distillery, for example, mm -hmm. they have five five uh, column, five steel column steel because uh, for AOC you have to distill in column. Pot steel is not allowed for the AOC. All right. So at Lamoni uh, Distillery you have uh, two columns for Lamoni, one column for Trois Rivières. And you have another column for another local brand called Duquesne. So each uh, brand has its own uh, column. So even for white and a drum, you have differences between the distillates. And then those distillates are going to be uh, to, are going to be aged in uh, in barrel in oak barrel. Uh, many, let's say that the biggest. Uh, 
percentage, perhaps uh, depending on the brands, but in general, about 80% of the barrel are oak barrel from uh, ex bourbon uh, cask, you know, American yeah. oak, and the 20th uh, from, uh, from France, uh, cognac or wine barrel. But as you said before, you have uh, like uh, Lamoni, you have uh, three, brand, three different brands. Uh, you have also a big uh, distillery like St. James, they make their St. James rum, but they can also distill for independent uh, brands that have no distillery working anymore because they are too, too ancient, too old. Like, uh, for example, uh, Hardy, which was a very old uh, distillery, but it doesn't work anymore since many years. But St. James distilled for them. You know, they have their own, uh, how do you say in, in English, uh, uh, I would say in quote, prescription for their home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. And uh, they will the do their own, their own aging in their own uh, warehouse. And then, and then for aging warehouse, here, uh, something that's interesting, it says uh, there's two facilities of, for aging uh, in Martinique. So no, only two companies are aging rum and like have a warehouse or all the other distilleries also have aging warehouse? No, every, each, each distillery has its own uh, warehouse for aging. Okay. Yes. For example, uh, if you... You have, uh, for example, De Paz, uh, JM, they have their own uh, warehouse, uh, St. James, uh, HEC, Clément, all, all of them have the, their own uh, uh, warehouse for, for aging. Understood. So another thing that I wanted to talk about the uh, that has to do with uh, the um, La Habitación, the distilleries, is that... so. After the once the season is over, the majority of the distilleries, or you tell me maybe if, if it's all of them, they take they take them apart to clean them. Yes, yes. You know, with the agricultural rum, you cannot you can uh, distill only the fresh uh, cane juice. So when the, in general the the harvest it's between uh, the end of January up to uh, beginning of July. And that's what we call the smoking uh, season because the distillery are working and smoking. <laughs> so after that, it's, uh, they close the distillery because there is no more sugar cane uh, and, and you cannot anyway, even if you have sugar cane, you are not allowed to, to, to dist distill. Therefore, they take that time to uh, put apart, the, to clean, in fact, as you said, to clean the, 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 the steel. And uh, to repair some some if there is some trouble with the steel and, and take uh, time to to clean everything of course yes understood but if a distillery uh, that does not participate of the AOC they don't have to do that they can continue produ uh, producing room you you are you are not obliged to to get the appellation if you want to distill some 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 are doing that so they have some brand without uh, the AOC appellation uh, if you want uh, as I was for example uh, if they have uh, you know to have the AOC appellation the, the sugar cane should be uh, selected from a list of uh, of uh, sugar cane and uh, uh, you cannot. Uh, uh, grow your sugarcane anywhere, you know. Even the soil is has to be uh, uh, have the AOC approval. Therefore, if you want to to distill sugarcane coming from non AOC parcels, you can do it. So you can distill after the season if you want. You are not uh, forbidden to do that, but you won't have the the Martinique on your bottle. Exactly, it will be French Martinique. West Indies. Yeah, it will be French West Indies. Yes. And uh, are there any popular rums out there that have that, that says French West Indies? Yes, you have some, uh, some for example, uh, even in, in the uh, brand who makes AOC rum, they can have non-AOC rum because uh, just they don't respect one part of the AOC rules. For example, 
you can have a white, if, as we said before, you can have a white clear on a drum, but if you put it in a, in a, in a wooden vat for two weeks, you won't have the AOC, but the worm is, is still good and uh, you can sell it. And some brands are, do, are doing that with their own name, but they, they don't put uh, Martinique on the rum, on the bottle, for uh, sorry. But you have now a new distilleries, craft distilleries, producing rum, uh, with uh, distilling with a uh, pot seal. So they don't have the OC, uh, the appellation Martinique, but they have a, they have a quite good success from two years. Understood. Um, you, you know, perhaps you know the brand. It's uh, Habitation du Simon, which is not the distillery du Simon. <laughs> so you have to be careful. <laughs> Habitation du Simon, which is a small uh, uh, craft distillery, is making uh, the brand is A1710. And, and uh, they started their first distillation in uh, uh, 2016. And now they have their, 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 their uh, fans. They, they, they sell a lot of, uh, of, not a lot because it's a small production, but they have their, their consumers uh, who like that kind of form. Super in interesting. Um, when, so you mentioned there's, so we, we, and we'll talk about the different distilleries that are, are part of the AOC. Uh, but there's also three distilleries that are not part of the AOC right now in in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Martinique. And so you have, yes, you have the Le Galion, which is the big one, because Le Galion is uh, the only now uh, uh, sugar factory in Martinique. And it's the uh, only sugar factory. It's also, it's a big distillery making a uh, uh, molassi rum. Of, in fact, they don't do agricole rum. They, they do molassi rum, but it, it's what we call the Grand Arom rum. And it is uh, made especially for the, the agro industry. And uh, so most of, most of the production is uh, exported to France for the, for the agro industry. And because they want to, to make, uh, to make uh, liqueurs and to make uh, pastries, etc. And uh, you, you, we don't drink that rum in Martinique. So you, it's very difficult to find it, in fact, in Martinique. And you have two other distilleries. As I was saying uh, previously, you have uh, Habitation du Simon, which is a small uh, craft distillery. And you have a new one, which is uh, Habitation Beau Séjour in the north of the island. And they, they are doing their first, they, they produce their first uh, NA drum uh, one and a half years ago. And they are they are growing. Uh, it's a small one, but uh, they, they, they have new a new strategy, and uh, they want to uh, to to produce more, and then uh, they buy some uh, barrel to for aging their first rum also. So we'll see what uh, if it's. Uh, uh, I think the the white energy is very good. Uh, I tested it uh, when they they, do, they they produce their first one, and uh, it's very promising. Yeah. It's a different style of rum. It's not the same. It's, a, it's more the pot style style, uh, pot steel style. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's it hasn't the same taste than the colon, uh, the rum from the colon. But it's very interesting. Yes, and then so so let we let's go I'll, let's go over the different distilleries right now. Uh, we have. Uh, and basically, we can talk about them at the same time as company owns. Uh, we got Spirit Bomb that owns um, Rum JM, mm -hmm. uh, and then they have also uh, Rum Clement, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes. Rum Rum Clement, um, that distillery doesn't it's not longer operating, right? So is everything being so Clement, done? Yes, Clement is the distillery is now uh, you know it's a visitor center. And a mm -hmm. big, big shop and a, like a, a museum. So the distillery, the distillery there, the most of most of their rum uh, are distilled at the Simon, a distillery du Simon, which is in the, the, the east, uh, southeast of the mm -hmm. island. And uh, 
but they also now uh, Clément is also now distilling at GEM because GEM have, has a big uh, capacity of production because they changed their their colon uh, they, buy, they, they bought a colon from Brazil uh, three years ago so they are now in capacity to produce many, uh, big volume of of uh, rum so they do some distillation for Clément also. And then you have La Martinique, right? Uh, company. Uh, oh, yes, La Martinique is it's a it's a big uh, French company. They own Saint James, they own De, De Paz and Dillon. Dillon, which just uh, Dillon doesn't appear on the, the the map that you have, but mm -hmm. Dillon was a, a, a big distillery who was uh, in near the, the, the big city for the France near La Favorite, and now Dillon is distilled at De Paz Distillery. But they do their aging in their uh, in their uh, old distilleries. And then who who and and and, and they have other brands also. Huh? La Martinique they have some brands like uh, Bali, which is a, a very very ancient brand, and uh, it, they had uh, distilleries near Naisson, but they closed a long time ago. So the, the rum is distilled by Saint James, and uh, they made their own uh, aging. And and then Nason, Nason and La Favorite, is that another family or they're separate companies? No, it's separate companies. It's the two uh, independent uh, distilleries, uh, family owned distilleries. They don't. Uh, uh, they're not related. <laughs> they, they are not at all. <laughs> Nason, it's a, it's a fam family Nason. Yeah. Which is uh, Grégory Nesson, who is a, is a distiller and uh, running the distillery. And La Favorite is another family, Dormois, which is uh, a very ancient uh, distillery, but they are completely uh, separated. Yes. So yeah. the, the, they are the smaller one in Martinique. I have them related because I have Ed Hamilton. He's the. He, he's the importer for uh, La Favorite and he's on here in the United States. So I was yes. assuming that basically at one point they were. No, really... no, we, no, <laughs> no, they are not from the. But Ed, Ed uh, he knows very well both of them. <laughs> so when, yeah, he's when, the he goes, when he goes to Martin, he goes to Nesson and he goes then after to La Favorite. <laughs> he's very welcome at uh, both uh, distilleries. Yeah. Let's talk about Maison La Maoni. Yeah. What yes. can you tell us a little bit about them? So Maison La Maoni, it's a, it's a big distillery, as I was saying before, in the south of, uh, of Martinique. And Maison La Maoni was very, very uh, popular in the 60s for their white, the white uh, honey drum uh, in the 60s. And it's uh, they, they have many different owners, or, and you know right now uh, they, they have been bought by Campari. Uh, uh, perhaps you know you know, and uh, they are producing uh, La Maison Lamoni, their brand Lamoni, but also Trois Rivières, and as I was saying before, also Duquesne. But Maison Lamoni is a very uh, uh, they have a big uh, warehouse and they are making some uh, very nice uh, age age rum. Uh, they just won a uh, gold medal at the ISS award and also to the Concours General Agricole, which is a big uh, award in uh, by the Ministry of Agriculture in France. And uh, perhaps you remember that uh, their uh, master blender, Daniel Baudin, uh, was named uh, best uh, master blender in, in Miami a few, three years ago, I think, uh, if I remember. So it's a, it's a, it's a very nice uh, brand and uh, very nice people working there. Yeah. Uh, and what about the three other companies that are not AOC? Are there... Are they under a big company umbrella or their family? No, they are family owned. Very family owned. Uh, the first one, uh, uh, Habitation du Simon, it's a very, very uh, old family 
that's why they called the brand A1710 because that was the date when the family arrived in Martinique, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, coming from France. And the the the, the, the if the Pompignan with the owner now, he wanted to make a room as the room was made, you know, before the ancient time when we are using pot steel instead of colon. And that's why he wanted to do that. And uh, many people uh, didn't believe in that project <laughs> because they say, why are we doing that? We are doing one with Cologne and you want to make one with uh, pot steel. <laughs> this is not our Martinique rum. And uh, he did it. And uh, as I was telling you, it's uh, now a big success. It's not a big production, but it's a big success. It is now recognized by the, by the other producers. Even if it's not an AOC room. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about. Let me go. Let me go over some of the questions. Mm -hmm. But before we go to the questions, uh, really quickly. Uh, I want to share that um, if you want more information about Jerry Gitani, um, you can, this is his Facebook. Next, actually on March 23rd, we'll be doing our next live stream, which is called Industry Rum Rebels. This is a new book that just came out about, uh, in the industry, which is super interesting. Uh, of course, if you can support us, this is the best way you can support Savvy, which is becoming going to becoming a patron. You know, just for $5 a month, you have unlimited access to all our our information are all our live streams, or you can go to Novo Cane as well, uh, where we have different swags from different brands. All right. Uh, and these are all our events. If you ever want to attend some of them, this is the, we have the Miami, Chicago, Puerto Rico. Fortunately, we have, uh, uh, and then uh, we have New York, Seattle, San Francisco, and LA. All right, enough said. Um, let me go to Q and A. Q &A. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you, uh, Federico, that I wrote also a book, but it's it's in French. So, <laughs> oh, you wrote it's, a book? It's called, yeah, it's called Un Rome Averti en vos deux. It was uh, we sold it thirty thousand uh, uh, thirty thousand books. books. Yes, and uh, oh my it God, is congratulations! Now in French, yes, I, I hope they will translate it in English. <laughs> and when 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 was that? That was uh, two years ago, and it's still uh, selling. It's, it's still a best selling. They, they are now. Uh, we we just put some uh, new new info in it, and a new edition uh, will come uh, soon. That's uh, congratulations! Was, was, I didn't know. Translated in, in Czechoslovakia, but not in English. <laughs> why, why Czechoslovakia? Because uh, one guy in Czechoslovakia wanted to have the right to 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 make the ed an edition in Czechoslovakia and Larousse, which is the editor in France, Larousse, like uh, uh, dictionary Larousse, and they, they give they give him the, the right to translate it. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So uh, like, uh, Rome is growing also in Czechoslovakia. Yeah, the interest for Rome. Yeah. This is amazing. I I was gonna say like you were saying like. How big the festival there? How big rum is? And a, like a, in a funny way, like, uh, but uh, France has always been in the in, in the very top of, of luxury, right? So uh, with fashion, with drink, with uh, with arts, with uh, champagne, cocktails, right? And uh, champagne. So we, I, it's, it's a great trend. That means that rum is gonna keep on growing around the world. If mm. we see that, right? That's uh, right, and it is growing around the world mm. at a, a very fast pace, especially aging rum, yeah, uh, aged rum and premium rums. Yeah, all right. Um, let me go for the first question. We have it from Dave Russell. Please tell us something about rum grande arome. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, grand grand arome. We say in French, it's uh, it's like in fact uh, what we call rum grand arome. It's like the Jamaican Roman. What makes it's from molassi, uh, it's a distillation of molassi, but what's important is uh, the fermentation process. It's a long uh, process. 
and in the in the wash you you add some uh, what we call the the vinas like a dunder for the jamaican rum so it's a rum which is very 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 uh, heavy rum with many many uh, uh, volatile element which gives a taste to the rum you know so it's uh, it's very very heavy rum with more than uh, uh, 500 congeners in it uh, non non alcoholic elements in it to who gives the, the rum or its taste yes that's that's the difference with the uh, that's, that's the characteristics of Gontar Rome, you know. Yeah. And then uh, the next question that I see is from Johannes, uh, is what about Legalion? You mentioned seven distil distilleries, but yes. left out Legalion, who don't yes, make agriculture. Yes, because Legalion is a sugar factory. So, but they do some Gontar Rome rum from the Molassi. But Many of this, uh, ex especially for export to France, you won't tr find a bottle of Le Gallion in a in a bar or in a you know in a supermarket. It's very difficult because we don't drink that kind of rum in Martinique. We we, we Martinique people they prefer the agricole rum, so they don't drink a white unaged uh, le, le molassi rum. So you will find a few ones age age one particularly, but not the unaged one. So most of the production is for ex export. But before, uh, Jerry, um, in Martinique, rum was made from molasses, right? It was something that transitioned. Right. And, then, right. and then it was a smart move um, to where it is today. No. But is there like a, that being said, so the locals in Martinique don't want to drink any, uh, any rum made out of molasses? They are uh, not used to drink it. But now, uh, more and more from the, the young people, they will, of course, if you give them a good uh, rum from, uh, I, I want to, I want, I won't make any advertising for any brand. But if you <laughs> a good rum from Jamaica or from Barbados, they, they will drink it, of course. <laughs> but you know, uh, you're right. Mulasi rum was produced in all the island, you know, in the French island, uh, as well as in all in the Caribbean. And you know why we we did, we started to make agricultural rum? Tell it's, me why. Just a bit of history. During the mid of the 19th century, there was a big uh, sugar crisis, and at the same time, uh, Napoleon was uh, uh, how do you say that? He was uh, introducing and developing the sugar from the from the sugar beet industry in in France. There was also uh, the end of the cheap labor force with the end of the slavery. So that three main factors will make a change in the, let's say, the local... Uh, uh, you have to imagine at that time in the colonies, like, like in, uh, in Martinique, there was about uh, more than 200 small sugar factories doing uh, sugar and rums. But many of them bankrupt, okay? So there was a change in the, uh, the economical model in Martinique. So you have, uh, they started, they built what we call the central factory, uh, sugar factory. And all the, in the, the land owner who, who had a uh, breakdown, uh, bankrupt, they sell, they were selling their sugar cane to the big factories. But so, some of them, they were unhappy with that because the cost of transportation was very high and the price of the sugarcane was low. So instead of selling their sugarcane to the big factories, they, they started to make rum with their sugarcane. But there were two schools, one with the fresh sugarcane juice and another school with the, the syrup, the, the, the juice, the warm uh, cooked juice. And uh, most part of the producers, they, they, they did, they, they find that the, the rum from the fresh juice were more flavorful. And that's, that was the beginning of the, the agricole rum called Rom Zabita at that time. Yeah. That's super interesting. Uh, we have actually um, a seminar coming up right now. It's like, um, is, is cane juice the new trend, right? And uh, um, for making rum. And I think more companies are, are going to shift to that way as molasses every time it's becoming more expensive, right, too. 
Yes, uh, it's a new nutrient because you can see like uh, in country like, uh, for example, Vietnam, Thailand, you, you have some uh, people making rum from pure sugar cane juice. Uh, even in, in the state, you have some small uh, craft distillery making rum from uh, like St. George or in, uh, in Louisiana, you have some, I don't forget, uh, I forget the name, but they are doing uh, rum with a uh, fresh uh, sugar cane juice. Now in Grenada, you have a new distillery uh, called Renegade. They have their own uh, sugarcane plantation, and now they they, they did their they produced their first uh, sugarcane rum uh, a few months ago. Uh, Mark Rainier with the owner, with a distiller uh, whiskey distiller in Ireland. So if there is a new trend. Uh, yes, more and more uh, interest for agricultural. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so we have one more question here. Uh, well, two more questions. Oh, more questions. Um, can you give us a description of a seventeen ten? And their process. So the seventeen uh, ten, they use uh, uh, fresh sugar cane juice. They have a small uh, pot still, uh, uh, which is a, like a, a cognac pot still with a small, uh, very small column of eight trays. And they so they use the fresh sugar cane juice, and they have a, a long fermentation, five days fermentation, but in a closed vessel, not open like for the agricultural. And they have uh, they produce a very nice uh, white and edge rum. They release their first uh, I won't say edge, but uh, it was a, a gold rum, the first gold rum, and I and they have now uh, some rum. Uh, that are in the uh, warehouse uh, uh, resting in a nice oak barrel, and I think they will release their first uh, age room in a few months. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then uh, we have a question from Letty. Uh, what is for Jerry the best rum except French one? <laughs> uh, I my preferred uh, molassi rum. Our, uh, I, I think uh, I, I won't give you a name, but I will give you the, the origin. I like some uh, some Jamaican because they are very specific and you can recognize them. It's very very nice one, and some uh, some other from Barbados also. Yeah. I gotta I gotta send you more Puerto Rican rum. And. Uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> No, no I, I, there is a new Cuban rum that I, I, I do appreciate. It's a new brand uh, called, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, it's uh, Eminente. It's a new Eminente, uh, yeah. I haven't uh, you, tried it. You tried it. it uh, I've not. It's I've not. nice because, the, 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 you know, the, as you know, the Cuban rum is a brand from heavy and light rum. Yeah. And they just put more heavy rum. 70% mm -hmm. of hair on and 30% of flavor. And I think you have the Cuban taste, but more, it's more, you know, uh, robust. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that so sounds I, do good. Like, I do like it also. I want to try that one, uh, but it's it's not going to be available in the US. Um, not, not uh, perhaps, I think they are moving to the US, yes. yes. Perhaps, no, 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 because it's a, it's a Cuban co company. Yes, so. but, uh, yes, of course, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. We won't have it. Right. <laughs> I got to go right. to Canada. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, last questions are, and this is actually a good question. Um, are all the syrups de cane de sucre produced by Le Galeon or like, um, because we use, there's a lot of syrups out there that come from Martinique. Hmm? The, so syrup? the syrup. Yes, we, we make some syrup in, uh, in Martinique. That's, we do, use they come, it. do they come from Le Galeon? No, you have different... Uh... You, you, you have different uh, brands because the, the syrup you do it with the juice, so yeah. you have different brands not uh, coming from Le Gagnon. You have uh, Nesson is doing one, uh, Lamoni is doing one, you know. But you use the syrup for you know our tea punch, we, we, we do we put some uh, syrup in it in, or in the different cocktails, you know. Excellent, and of course, in, and of course in pastries also. Yeah. <laughs> well, Gary. Thank you very much. Um, You're welcome. It was a pleasure for me to to talk with you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, I, I haven't been speaking English for two years, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a good exercise for me. <laughs> <laughs>
Benoit is like, yeah, you should give this task to Jerry. He's going to love it. He's like, okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny I, all right well jerry have a good one thank you so much for taking the time to, come and hope to see you soon we will see each other soon uh and goodbye bye bye ciao everybody bye bye, bye.